Hello to you. I'm Jesse R. Johnson. I'll be speaking to you about permanent magnets, specifically the Johnson machine. It is a semi-self-sustaining machine, its actual form. This video is to show a semi-self-sustaining machine. It is semi, meaning that it's not forever self-running. That's impossible. Machines operate on laws that's impossible to violate. A machine is anything that is used to do work, with one exception. Living beings cannot be made into machines. When this is tried, instead they become slaves. To make a working model will take money. Therefore, please go to the link below this video and click and donate $20 or more for materials to build a working model of this system. Perpetual over unity, indefinite self-running machines are mechanically impossible. Machines using a fraction of input energy compared to the whole system within its bounded space, operating in the context of a few months or a few years with low maintenance, giving useful work can be constructed, and, but they follow 15 to 20 non-violatable laws of machines. There are two categories to all machines in the universe initiator and non-initiator. This system is category A, initiator, type 1, force production. The explanation shall be understandable to all mechanically minded. Those who are able to build, demonstrate, promote, implement, sell, and utilize the system. This is for physicists, machinists, mechanics, inventors, and those who are ready to refine it innovate and make things happen. It'll take money to build a working model. So all comments should be we can do types for the uses of purposes, implementations, prototypes, models, refining it, investing in, making public, advertising, make marketing and so on. The system is for the world and therefore public. It has been notary public to prove the date of invention. And it is not patented or nor is it patent pending. It is public and for the world. Explanations will be illustrated using highly simplified drawings. Now to begin, hold on please. I'm going to move the camera. Now, to begin, this is a side view of the wheel system. There are two wheels, A and B, A and B, with magnet C attached to them. Magnet C attached to them. These are the magnets. Magnets, magnets C. Now, both wheels with the magnets are identical. They are identical, and the magnets repel, repel each other. Now, when the magnets are face-to-face, face-to-face, like this here in black, face-to-face, -face, they have a primary focus line drawn through their center, as you can see here, drawn through their center, straight through. The PFL and the X-coordinate line over here <coughs> are one and the same. When Excuse me. Now, when the magnets are not face to face, not face to face, they have a secondary focus line. A secondary focus line here, as you can see here. Here's the magnets, not face to face, and here are the secondary focus lines here. Secondary focus line number three, right here. Now, it is drawn through that centers, and they cross each other at one single point on the x-coordinate line. Cross at one point on the x-coordinate line. This is the one, pardon me, not, not x, but the y, pardon me, the y-coordinate line, straight down. This is the x, across horizontal. This is the y, vertical. Now, if the magnets rotate even one single degree above, above, the PFL, or the primary focus line, the rotating force will be upward, upward. Now, if the magnets rotate even one degree below, below the PFL, 
bef below the primary focus line, the rotating force will be downward, this way, downward. Now, when the wheels are rotating, in order to keep the magnets, when the wheels are rotating, in order to keep the magnets aligned, a set of alignment gears, V, alignment gears, V, right here, V, the teeth of these gears are meshed on the inside, on the inside, inside here, on the inside, inside with the hub gear, the hub gear E. This is the hub gear, E right here, this is the hub gear, and, and the alignment gears on the, are on the inside of the hub gears right here, and the hub gear teeth, they are meshed with the hub gear teeth. To continue, the hub gear E right here, the hub gears, are, are attached to the axle D. That's in the dead center here. The dead center here. The axle is in the dead center right here. Now, on the outer side, the outer side of the hub gear, that's right here, is attached a ratchet teeth system. Ratchet teeth system G. A ratchet teeth system G. There's G. A ratchet teeth system here. Ratchet tooth right on the outside of the hub gear. This is the inside of the hub gear. And this is to keep the wheels from going backwards or moving in reverse. It, because the hub gear will stop it from moving in reverse. It will only go in one circular direction. Now the alignment gears are attached to the ends ends of rod F. This is rod F right here. Rod F and a power gear. W, w right here is a power gear which is also attached to rod F that can be coupled coupled to an electric generator to produce electricity from the torque force, the turning force of these wheels or the rotational force of the rotating wheels. Now in the exact middle of the wheels right here in the exact middle of the wheels of A and B and magnet C, magnet C, these are all magnets, magnet C are a cancellation metal I. This is a cancellation metal I in the middle, in the exact middle in green, which is I, and a cancellation metal gate J. Cancellation metal gate J. Cancellation method to open and close. It opens and closes up and down. This gate right here closes up and down. Both I and J, that's I and J, meet at point K. Point K. Now the magnetic cancellation is along the X coordinate line. The X coordinate line only. Now when the magnets are at the primary focus line, their fields do not touch the top of the cancellation metal at point K. If you see in orange, right here, orange, brownish orange, the magnetic fields does not touch point K. Point K right here, point K is right here, this small green line drawn across here. The magnetic field does not touch the top of I at point K. This is a top, now, I'm going to remove this. Hold on, please. Now, this here, this here is a top view of the wheel system. Here's wheels A, A, and B. Magnets, C, right here, all brown and brownish red. That's the magnets. The axle, here's the axle, the axle right here, the axle D, here's the axle D, axle D, the hub gears, these are the hub gears, H, hub gears, the hub gears, H, pardon me, the hub gears, pardon me, hub gears, E, I misdid that, it is the, the pardon me, I didn't, hub gears, E, the hub gears, is at E. These are the hub gears, E. The ratchet teeth system, G. The ratchet teeth system is right here, G. Okay, and the rod, F, right here, rod, F, straight across. The power gear, W, right here. 
alignment gears, V is right here. These are all the alignment gears to keep the magnets always aligned. The cancellation metal, I, and cancellation metal gate, J. J and I, as you, because you're looking from, at it from the top. The Z coordinate line, here's the Z coordinate line at the bottom here that goes across because this is a top view. This is a, hold on, I'm going to remove this one. Hold on, please. And I'm going to remove the camera back. Hold on, please. Now, to begin, this is a, this is the, a front view of the cancellation metal system. A gear rack, which is right here, gear rack P, which is in green, in green, a gear rack P is attached to the cancellation metal gate, this cancellation metal gate J. A very small electric motor Q, very small electric motor Q, is used to lift and lower the gate up and down several times faster than the magnet C rotates on the wheels. Now, to neutralize the gate's weight, this gate weighs something, and to neutralize the gate's weight to zero, a cord is attached to the gate at one end, right here, it's in black, right here, at the de dead middle, at one end, and attached to a counterweight, which is in purple over here, a counterweight S. S right here is the other end of it is attached here to here. This and this weight, this purple weight, is the same weight as this gate. So therefore, it neutralizes the gate's weight, so that the little e electric motor will have no strain on it, picking up the gate and lowering it. Now, the counterweight slides on its guide rail, here's the guide rail right here, up and down to keep it uh, solid. Now the counterweight is to reduce the stress on the small electric motor. Now the cancellation metal gate stays aligned by its frame. This is its frame right here, R. Let me find uh, R, 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 cancellation metal frame here. This is a frame. Here's the frame. Keeps the, the, uh, the, 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 the cancellation metal gate uh, uh, aligned. Now, since the cancellation metal I and the cancellation metal gate are magnetized by the magnet C, they are tracked and stick together at point K. At point K, and to unstick them and and neutralize their attractive force to zero, spring rods, spring rods L. L, as you can see, spring rods right here in, in dark blue, spring rods right here. Spring rods L are clearance passed, clearance passed through the cancellation metal in green right here, and uh, vertically that is, and the bottom of the spring rods L are attached to special springs in, special springs in, special springs. And the special springs, which are held in place by the spring holder, O, oh, this spring holder right here, that's O. Now, the special springs push upward with equal force that the cancellation metal gate forces downward toward the cancellation metal I. When the magnet C reaches one degree above the primary focus line, the gate starts to open. When the next set of magnets, the magnetic field, its magnetic field, the top of the magnetic field of magnet C reaches point K at the top of the cancellation metal, the bottom of the gate, the bottom of the gate touches top, touches the top of the cancellation metal. In other words, they come together at point K while closing and the process is repeated. Please go below this video and click the link below 
and donate any amount of money, $20 or more. This is for materials and tools so that a working model can be built. Hold, hold on, please. I'm going to move the camera back again. Hold on, please. Hello to you again. Jesse Johnson here again. Now, I'm Jesse R. Johnson. I'm a physicist, a mechanic, a machinist. I'm an also an inventor, and I'm a, th a mathematician, an engineer, astronomer, and teacher. And I want to thank everyone for watching and listening. So folks, make things happen, people, and a fine day to all of you.